YouTube, what's good? It's Mad Money J back with another fire video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made $4,600 in one month after literally graduating from one month. I graduated one month later, I'm making $4,600. I'm not lying to you. I'm gonna show you how I did it. I'm gonna even show you the numbers. We're gonna get technical. I'm gonna show you crazy stuff. I'm gonna put charts and graphs up here to show you how I made this money. It is possible if you are a certified pharmacy tech. So yes, you have to be a certified pharmacy tech in order to achieve this type of success or this level of success. So I'm gonna be telling you guys what a per diem job is because I had to have a per diem position in order to get myself in position to make $4,600 after taxes. This is after taxes in one month as a certified pharmacy tech. So let me pretty much apologize to all of YouTube out there um, that's subscribing to the channel. I apologize. However, I've been working extremely hard networking and getting myself into a better position so I could have that work, school, lifestyle type of balance. But I'm presenting this video to you and I hope you guys will take this information. I hope it's useful. Now, let's get straight to business. So right here, I got my chart right here and I'm gonna go over how much I was making at each per diem job. After I'm done telling you that, I'm going to tell you what a per diem job is, what it looks like for a pharmacy tech, okay? So, um, I'm going to have it on the screen here. So, let me stand like right here. That way, it could be on the screen right here. So, let's start it off like this. All right. So, the first hospital job, right? This is hospital job number one. Um, I got paid bi-weekly every Friday and I was working there. This check period is from April 20th to May 20th. So 30 days. I did about 107.5 hours at just this job within those 30 days. They started me out as $21.22 fresh out of Pima Medical Institute. $21.22. The gross income was about $2,281.15. That's how much I made in that 30 day period. Now, my net hourly rate is actually $17.76. And let me add this, the reason why, another reason why it's so low, um, well it's not so low, but it's a little bit low is because at this hospital, I wasn't packing my lunch because I had to be there early, so I was eating in the cafeteria. And there you could just swipe your badge and they'll just take uh, what you owe to the cafeteria um, out of your paycheck. So my net hourly rate, this is after taxes, it would have been $17.76. Now my net income from working at this job, this is hospital number one, for 30 days doing 107.5 hours, was $1,900 or $1,909 and 20 cents. So moving on to hospital two, okay? Hospital two, I got paid bi-weekly on a Tuesday. So every Tuesday, I got a check, all right? Um, I worked there from April 18th until April 24th. Actually, that's supposed to be May 24th. So April 18th until May 24th. Um, I did about, actually, you know what, scratch that. No, I'm right. April 18th until April 24th. And I did about 84 hours and 84.69 hours. Okay, this is hospital two. Um, they pay me a gross hourly rate of $20. $20 even an hour. That's how much I was getting paid, 20 an hour. The gross income was sixteen hundred was yeah one thousand six hundred ninety three dollars and eighty cents. Okay, so that was my gross income. That's before taxes. The net hourly rate 
was $17.86. And like I explained before on the first hospital, you could tell that this one, they're paying me $1.22 less, but I was actually making more because at this hospital, I didn't have to go in to about like nine o'clock. So I had some time to eat. I had some time to pack my lunch. Um, now, $17.86, that's, that's my hourly after taxes. And my net income, this is after taxes, guys. Net income, 15, or I'm sorry, $1,512.56. That's how much money I made doing 84 hours, or 84.69 hours. All right, moving on to hospital three. And these are all per diem positions. Hospital three. Let's see, I worked there from May 8th until May 20th. I did about 71.08 hours there between May 8th and May 20th. That's how much hours I put in. They paid me at a gross hourly rate of $18 even, all right? My gross income from that job was $1,279.44, I'm sorry, let me redo that, $1,279.44. The net hourly rate there, now this is, this is the hourly rate um, after taxes, this is about $16.25, right? My net income there is about $1,000. $155.06, okay? Now, the reason why, another reason why um, the net income was a little bit lower than the $18 an hour there is because I was buying lunch there because I had to be there early. I didn't have time to pack lunch or eat breakfast, so I was eating there. Good thing about it is they were very cheap, all right? They were very cheap. The cafeteria, everything's cheap, and they even had vegan options, which was pretty cool. All right, so let's add all of this up. So this is all in a month, meaning that these, this is 30 days worth of work. In 30 days worth of work, are you listening? Listen, 30 days worth of work. I did 263.27 hours. I did 263.27 hours, all right? In 30 days of work. All right, uh, um, let's break that down in weeks. I worked 65.82 hours a week, okay? I did, what's that, 20, about 25, almost 26 more hours than 40 hours a week, right? And I made $4,600, okay? So let's break that down even more, right? On average, this is the average. On average, I worked about nine hours daily but I work seven days a week, okay? So when you look at it, it's not that bad, all right? However, my hours did not average nine hours. Uh, for example, hospital two that I mentioned, I had to work nothing but 10 hours a day, okay? That's the standard. The other two hospitals were eight hours, all right? Um, now, my average pay fresh out of school is, $19.74 out of the three jobs. When you do the median and get the average, $19.74 an hour. That's fresh out of school per diem working at three hospitals. That's my average, okay? And my gross income was about $5,000, or I'm sorry, $5,254.39. That's before taxes, okay? So is that gross hourly income. That's before taxes. Okay, so my net hourly income, this is after taxes, is $17.29. That's what I average. Out of three jobs, that's what I average in the 17s, okay? Now, when I combine all the net income on my checks, it came out to be $4,576.62. So it's safe to say 4,600, but you can see I was right there. So that's how I did it. This is how I made $4,600 my first month straight out of school as a certified registered pharmacy technician, 
okay? And you can do it too. And if you guys don't believe me, check this out. Look, pay stubs. I got the pay stubs to show you guys, right? I got pay stubs to show y'all, man. All right? Here goes some more. Look. All right? Pay stubs right here. I can't show can't show you too much, but uh I have no reason to lie. You guys know this channel is here to help you guys. I get questions from all over the world, literally all over the world, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, how you guys want to become a certified pharmacy tech, how the work life is in a hospital and not in a retail setting. So I have the answers for you guys because I'm doing it, okay? And I'm sharing it and guess what? When I wanted to be a certified pharmacy tech, there was nobody doing this, okay? There was nobody doing it. So I have no reason why I'm here to help you guys. I actually wanna see this field grow. I have a lot of respect for this field. I spoke to doctors who used to be pharmacy techs and they wanna see the field grow. Everybody wants to see the field grow. I spoke to pharmacists, nurses, uh, x-ray techs that used to be pharmacy techs. Yes, this job can be a stepping stool for you to get to a higher level of success. Um, however, this job can also just be the end role for you because pharmacy is growing. So who knows where someone else can take it, right? There is another me, there's, you know, there's another me somewhere that's interested in pharmacy and will you know, start to do or will do better things than I'm doing, you know? So, um, and none of this happened without the grace of God, without my family, without support, without friends. So make sure you guys are communicating with your friends, your family, because it is, it will take a toll on you, all the studying, um, you know, the, the long, hard hours without getting a check into two weeks later. So yes, you will have to have people that's gonna hold you down. Um, that's without a doubt. However, let's move on now. Now I wanna kinda of show you guys and try to um, get you guys to understand exactly what a per diem is. I was speaking to one of my friends that I graduated with and I seen her at graduation and she told me she's working a job but she's looking for more hours. So I try to introduce her. Actually, I actually try to give her my old per diem job cause currently right now I'm working full time and I still have all my per diem jobs. So I'm actually trying to give her one uh, but she doesn't want it because I don't I don't think she understands what it is, but hopefully if she sees this She might want to take it. But anyway, let me show you what a per diem job is So what is a per diem job, right? Per diem is a job that's Going to have the highest pay and the highest pay is correlated with your skills and your experience so when I was at Pima, I was working at CVS at the same time. But if you guys know my story from watching the previous videos, I've been a pharmacy tech for four years before I got to Pima. So, um, they're gonna pay you the highest pay though, without a doubt. Some, in, you know what? Some hospitals are gonna pay you highest pay no matter what. It doesn't matter about the experience, it doesn't matter about um, your skills, as long as you're a CPHC, they'll give you the highest pay. So some hospitals will give you that highest pay as a per diem. Next, no benefits, okay? So you're gonna get the highest pay, but there's no benefits. Guys, there's pros and cons to everything. And that's exactly how I made this list. So as you listen and you hear this list, you'll see that there's cons and benefits to it, okay? So you get the highest pay, there's no benefits. Um, you make your own schedule, okay? So you get to make your own schedule, man. So, I mean, it's this is the only way you could uh, uh, accumulate $4,600 as a CPHT, is making your own schedule. There's no job that's gonna give you um, hours, you know, seven days a week. You know, um, one hospital I work for, actually the full times, the, the full time techs there, they do seven on one, seven off. Right, but they don't do seven straight, you know, for the entire month. The only way you're gonna do that is a, is being a per diem. So you get to make your own schedule, right? So let me tell you how it works. A lot of these hospitals, they have apps. 
So on the app, you just go on the phone or the computer and you're able to see, um, you know, what days are open and available for a per diem, right? Um, if you were full time, those days will more so look like uh, times where you could get overtime in. Um, also, um, the people you work with, they can request days off and ask you through the app, through a message to see if you want to cover their shit. So another thing, when you do get in the hospital, you want to network with people and, you know, ask people, hey, are you taking a holiday coming up? Do you have someone who you usually give your hours to when you go out of town or, you know, things like that? That's how I picked up a lot of hours. Um, you're going to pick up a lot of hours your first month anyway, because they want to train you. And if you show them that you're open to train, you know, for two weeks straight or at least, you know, 40 hours straight, you know, just one whole week of training and knocking it out as a per diem, they're going to give you hours. OK, and, and that's that's what I had, you know, and it it, it wasn't a bad problem. I was having good problems. <laughs> I was having good problems, OK, because I was you know, getting the chance to get more hours. And a lot of people struggle with that. Even some per diem struggle with that. So if you listen, you know, I'm also giving you a couple of, um, just some advice, you know, that I know from my professional, uh, you know, my professional point. So um, you could you could go to the app and you could book, I, I like to say book, but you could pick what days you want to work, right? Um, and they have to be available. Um, or you can uh, pick up days that people drop off that are full time. Per diems to drop off something too and you could pick up as well. This is how you get your hours as a per diem, okay? This is how you get it after your training period. Your training period, you only have, you all you have to do is speak to your supervisor and tell them, hey, you know, I'm open to training for two weeks straight or a week straight. You know, after you ask them how much or how long your training is, you can tell them, Hey, I'm ready to train for two or you know a week straight. So this is how you get your hours though. All right. Um, however, you are limited to 900 hours a year. Now, listen closely. What that means is after you after you complete 900 hours, and it actually it's greater than or equal to 900 hours. Some hospitals is 900. Some is 800. You know, um, I haven't seen anybody, I haven't seen a hospital that had a policy where the hours was over 900. That's the most I've seen. And 900 hours, five days a week, if you was a per diem working five days a week uh, for six months, that's 900 hours, right? So um, how that works is pretty much once you hit 900 hours, you cannot come back to the pharmacy for an entire year, okay? So let's say I completed my 900 hours right in July at a hospital. I won't be able to get back on to the schedule until next July, okay? And then that 900 hour uh, clock restarts. So that's how it works, okay? That's one of, that's one of the disadvantages or the cons of being per diem. However, this is exactly why you want to have more than one per diem, okay? Not only the scheduling, because you can schedule yourself Monday through Wednesday, or you can schedule yourself, you know, Tuesday and Saturday because that's only available. But if you have multiple per diem jobs, you can fill in those gaps. And that's what I had to do in order to work seven days a week, all right? So uh, that's where having multiple per diem jobs comes uh, to your advantage um, because say you did complete that 900 you have a whole other job where that clock hasn't reached you know the the limit so um, the other thing is uh, there's a minimum of, of three to four work days per month now this is to your advantage as well because say your training is about you know two weeks at one job don't stress out because you'll still have, you know, an opportunity to at least get three days in, you know, at your other hospital job, you know? So um, that's the minimum though, you know? Um, another benefit of that, and I know, I actually know a pharmacist who's been working per diem for like 10 years. 
I mean, there's there's people out there that just work per diem, you know, uh, techs and pharmacists. And when you start to work around them, you'll see why. You know, a lot of people um, who are per diem, they also have other things going on, like they're they're into real estate, you know, or they might be into stocks or crypto or something. They have other things going on. They just have this as their stable, you know, foundation. This is what keeps them grounded. So um, there's a lot of people that only work per diem. Um, so you don't have to stress out about picking out a whole bunch of days. Now that's not going to get you to the 4,600. However, it'll keep your job security there. So you don't have to worry about them letting you go. Okay, so uh, you have to work between like three and four. That's the minimum um, amount of days you have to work at the hospital in order to keep your per diem position. I believe you get like two strikes, maybe like, I think like two strikes before they uh, terminate you, you know? So you, you like say you miss like two months or not miss, say you didn't work for two months straight at the hospital, most likely they're, you know, they're, if their census is low, they'll, they'll let you stay. But if it's high and there's been days where you can book and you haven't been booking yourself to work, they're going to let you go. They're going to terminate you. All right. Um, next, next. Uh, okay. So a benefit from being a per diem is you have a greater chance of becoming a full time tech at that hospital. Now, a lot of times in what I've actually seen, there's not a lot of hospitals that hire technicians full time that never worked in a hospital before. Even if you have a year worth of clinical experience like I did, I came on a scene with a year of clinical experience. They still didn't hire me full time. Now, check this, one hospital actually offered me a, a full time position literally two weeks after I became a per diem and I was working there already. So um, you have a possible chance of becoming full time. When you're in these hospitals, they actually give the full time positions to the people who are already working in the pharmacy already. So you got that going for you as a per diem. The other thing is the experience in the networking. Guys, you don't understand how crazy the networking can be. Look, man, I, I can't really explain it. You guys have to go out there on Indeed, on LinkedIn, on Glassdoor, and go for these per diem jobs because the networking will get you to higher places. I told you guys, look, man, I'm working full time now and I work, I still work in an IV room. I have my own desk, cubicle. I mean, you know, and it would have never happened if I wasn't a per diem working at it at as many hospitals as I was at. So look, the experience part of being a per diem, right? Is that you are going to be around so many techs, so many pharmacists, nurses, doctors, x-ray techs. You're gonna get out there. You're getting yourself out there, right? And if you dress nice like me, you know, nice scrubs, nice shoes. You guys know how I tell you about dressing, man. And you know, what's crazy is Pima even tells you about dressing. It tells you about actually looking good, having clean scrubs, clean shoes. If you got white shoes, make sure you wash them. This is called professionalism. And you'll see it in the hospital. There are some people that, that look like they just woke up out of bed, but don't let that be you, especially if you subscribe to this channel. So look, people are going to recognize you. They're going to notice you. They're going to want to follow you. They're going to, they're going to want to know what you're into. Okay. So I've seen this happen to me countless times before. So the experience, the networking is all there. Then another part of the experience in networking is you'll be exposed to different IV rooms. Some IV rooms and one hospital actually, one hospital I worked for didn't have an IV room. The other hospital didn't let me go into the IV room because I wasn't full time. But one hospital had me in the IV room, you know, um, and I'm in there making TPNs. I'm in there, you know, making regular IVs, uh, patient specific IVs, uh, you name it, you know, you name it. Um, so, you know, you'll see the process of how things go at different hospitals. The other thing is 
I was working for a major hospital. I work for a long-term, or what they call, I think an LTAC, long-term hospital. And then I worked at a rehab hospital where the patients only stay there for 12 days. So I have the experience and I witnessed, you know, how the pharmacy operates in all of these different types of hospitals. So, you know, that is pretty big on a resume, you know? Um, you get to learn, you know, so much stuff. And then you have people there that know so much things and they teach you different. And it's your job to take everything you know and consolidate it into a, you know, a learning mechanism that you understand, right? So that's exactly what I did. When you take these type of jobs, take notes on everything. With like, you really want to be involved in everything, participate in everything as a per diem because when you do, there's greater opportunities out there. This is like the best way to get your foot in the door. An externship is good. Now, there's nothing wrong with an externship. There's nothing wrong with volunteering. Those things are good too. And they might work for you or they might not. However, when you're per diem, you're making the money. That's the, that's the difference. You are making the money and you're making the highest, you're, you're getting the highest pay. All right, you're getting the highest pay as well as a per diem. So what I want you guys to do, I want you guys to take all that in, all right? I want you guys to think about this. I want you guys to look at the other video to learn how to pass the PTCB so you can get to this level, all right? That's what I want you guys to do. Other than that, that's all I got for y'all today. That's all I got for this video. Tomorrow I gotta work and right now I'm at school, so Bad Money J out, yeah.